Hey everyone, Squatch Daddy here, giving you some more tips, tricks, and guides on all things Valorant so you can suck just a little bit less. If you want more videos and guides like this, be a homie and drop a like, sub, and comment your thoughts on this and what you'd like to see next. Okay, so settings. This is a classic one. Everyone should be going through this when they first start into the game, and Big Daddy Riot Games has really hit us up with this one. Valorant comes with a massive suite of different things you can customize and optimize to your liking, to tweak your performance or the look of the game, or to just make it look crazy. I'll be going through the entire settings menu plus some other things you can do to make the game to your preferences and improve clarity and performance, which in turn can help you with your gameplay. For all of you guys with potato PCs out there, no worries my guy, I can relate to that. I too was once a potato gamer, and god bless Riot Games for making this game so easy to run. If all you have is grandpa's PC in the basement, then even you'll be fine. Okay, so before I even get into the Valorant settings, there are some things that I want you guys to go over in order to improve your frames, and this will be more targeted for the potato PC gamers out there. If you have a better PC, this may also work for you, so feel free to give this a try. First thing to do is to remove all the damn garbage in your computer. If you want to be an epic chad gamer, you gotta remove all the bloatware in your PC so you can run this game smoothly. Install something like CCleaner to remove some random files that you have and your registry, and then go into your control panel and just remove all the trash you have in there. This will help reduce your CPU and RAM usage and allocate more resources into the game. Second thing to get will be MSI Afterburner, which is a tool which is usually meant for overclocking graphics cards and whatnot, but has a pretty sweet tool that lets you monitor your temps and your CPU and your GPU usage so you can know what's holding your PC back from running the game faster. Full disclosure, Valorant is very CPU bound and only uses two CPU cores, so although the barrier to entry is actually super low, you don't get that high FPS even with a good CPU. I run an i7-8700K with a GTX 1080 Ti on my machine, but I'm only capping like 240 FPS max with like no CPU usage. You guys may complain about how high that is, but I could literally get the same or more frame rates in other games like Overwatch or CSGO, so take that as a reference. Anyways, once you've got this installed, you go to the monitoring tab and then turn things on like CPU and GPU usage and their respective temperatures and enable the on-screen display by mapping it to a hotkey. Then you can turn it on in-game to see how your computer is doing as well. If something's too hot or you notice that your computer is going full speed and with bad frame rates, you might want to look into that. Okay, now moving into the actual Valorant menu. Valorant does a great job with the optimization of the game because I honestly play the game on low settings and it doesn't look too different than when it's on high, and everything is still really clear. Riot did say that they wanted to emphasize hard on competitive integrity, so they probably wanted to make sure that people didn't get cucked just because your PC isn't the fastest. So props to them. The first tab we're seeing here is general, and it has some miscellaneous random stuff that you can change depending on your personal preferences, but nothing too crazy performance-wise, stuff like your mouse sensitivity, your language, etc. Something you want to keep track of is your minimap, as there's lots of different variations of it that you can customize to your liking. By default, it tends to rotate around and center based on what's in front of you, but I personally don't really like that style, so I make it in a fixed position. Feel free to customize it to your preference, however, there isn't really much of a difference for different styles. In the other section of the general tab, there are some things that you can customize like blood and corpses, which I think should be left on for more clarity of the game state. Blood will give you a better indicator when you hit your shot as the bright red blood will let you know clearly. The same kind of applies to corpses as you would like to know where the enemies have been downed and whatnot. There is a minimap indicator for that, but it's better to have more options. Moving on to controls, this doesn't really have to do with performance at all as this is just for your keybinds. Feel free to change them to whatever you want or prefer. You might want to bind your chat buttons to something other than default but though, because I find them hard to reach unless you got big boy hands. However, I do recommend going through it to see what you think you could bind to improve your gameplay. Maybe your mouse has a lot of buttons or something that you want to map, go crazy. I would say everything is a similar case with the crosshair settings as well. The game has an extremely in-depth system for choosing the exact kind of crosshair you want for yourself, and I applaud them for that. Change your crosshair to whatever color and shape you are comfortable with. Also, if you're new to the game or to the tactical shooter genre, I would recommend leaving on the inaccuracies as they allow you to get a better sense as to the general spread of where your shots will go. I find this incredibly helpful for my own play. Now onto the big boy, which is the video settings. Most of the time, if you're using a lower spec computer, your graphics card or GPU will be the bottleneck, which is essentially the part that is preventing your FPS from going any higher. 
This might be because you're not you're using a cheaper laptop or a generally older computer that doesn't really run games all that well. Not to worry, however, as Riot Games recognizes this need and optimizes their games incredibly well to be run on older computers. This was the case for League of Legends and is also the case for Valorant. This is why I recommended you getting MSI Afterburner earlier as it can tell you exactly how much both your CPU and GPU are being used in order to better gauge what you need to fix. Most of these settings fixes will be if your GPU is the one that is holding you back. If your CPU is the reason you're getting low frame rates and you've already done your best to clean up your computer and reduce any interference, this guide not, might not help you and you might need a better computer. The first thing on this list is the screen resolution that you run the game at. Generally speaking, the lower your resolution of the game, the less load your game will take on your graphics card, which can then improve your frame rates. Although this can be helpful for you, the lower you bring your resolution, the worse the game will simply look. Everything will just start to look pixelated and ugly and whatnot, so if you really can't tolerate it, I'd probably raise the resolution if possible. Next is display mode. If you only care about getting as many frames as your computer can handle, you can set this to full screen. If you have some buffer room, you could definitely set it to windowed full screen, which is what I personally use. This lets me tap out of the game much faster as it renders the game while still maintaining the Windows desktop. This is great when you're running it down and get picked at the start of the round so you can tap out and go on Reddit or something. Aspect Ratio Method This thing doesn't really matter too much unless you're using a resolution for the game that doesn't match your screen's aspect ratio, in which case using the fill setting will stretch it out so that it fills up your entire screen. The rest of the video settings in the general tab relate to capping FPS. This can be useful if you find that your computer gets extremely hot while playing. Sometimes CPUs tend to force themselves to keep going until they get too hot and then subsequently throttle their speeds which is bad for consistent frames in gameplay. If you find that this is an issue for you, then you should probably cap your frames to something lower than infinity. If you have the thermal headroom, it is useful to keep your, keep your frame rate above the refresh rate of your monitor as it does somewhat reduce input lag, but do not overdo it. Next, moving on to graphics quality. This is where you will see the majority of your frame rate increases and improvements. Going down the list, there's a lot of random things you can change, including material, textures, detail and UI quality, vignette, and vsync. Simply put, you can turn all of these way down to low or off, and you should see a fairly significant increase in performance. I also find that the reduced details also help me focus on gameplay. Anti-aliasing and antroscopic filtering can be helpful for smoothing out pixelated stuff and helping clarify things that are farther away. I turn on improved clarity, but I don't really see it do anything, but just in case, I leave it on. Enhanced gun skin visuals, I don't really care about, so I leave it off. Distortion, off. Pretty basic. Shadows, believe it or not, this option does not change too much when compared to CSGO, as agents do not produce shadows in the first place, regardless of whether or not it is on. This really only changes the details of the shadows in the background, so I really just leave it off. On to stats. This is more for your information and for your own purposes, but I like to have the FPS and ping counters on at all times just so I can make sure that I'm getting the right frame rates. I set it to text only. Alright, so if you've applied all of these steps, you should see some fairly significant improvements in both the overall quality of the game as well as your frame rates, which will greatly help your overall improvement of the game without resorting to some weird exploits, which I've seen some people doing. Don't do that. If you guys have any other recommendations or your own tips for running Valorant faster, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, cheers and good luck in your games, everyone.